Welcome to the 16th video of my indoor weather station tutorial series and this is going to be interesting because in this video we're going to tie in um, all the stuff that we did in the last video. So we're going to hook up all the sensors uh, simultaneously and we're going to download a script uh, with which you can gather data from all of, the, all of the sensors at the same time. So the way I'm going to do this is again with a breadboard and it's going to become a little bit cluttered because you've got a lot of sensors. So what I'm going to do is for for all the connections that we do just on the board I'm going to be using these wires and you do that by just cutting a piece off then you use a wire stripper like this one to strip the ends and then you just bend it and you can make a nice clean connection that is fairly sturdy. For all the connections that need to go directly to the pins, I'm going to use the, the female wires as before, female jumper cables. Um, so anyway, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to insert all the I squared C communication sensors up here. And remember that all of these needed a power supply, a ground line, and then a data and a clock line. And the way I'm going to do that is the following. So I'm going to supply 3.3 volts to this entire column here. And I'm going to supply ground to this entire column. And that way we can supply all of these sensors and more with um, power from here and ground from here. So we can do onboard connections there. Similarly, I'm gonna use blue in this case um, as a data line. And white as a clock line. And then I'm going to have data connected to this column and clock connected to this column. So there, again, we'll be able to make connections like this. Um, regarding the CO2 sensor, I'll make all those connections directly. So we need a 5 volt supply here we need a ground supply and I'll also connect this directly to the to the board so I'll just go and look for another ground so for instance the seventh one here one two three four five six seven this is ground oh and by the way you may have noticed that I, I haven't uh, um, powered up the Raspberry Pi yet. I'd like to hook everything up and then do the power up. Okay, and now we'll have two more wires here and here. This one will go in the fourth pin and this one in the fifth. Um, okay, that looks, that looks okay to me. So now it's still missing are these two sensors and I showed in the previous tutorials that these need an analog to digital converter. Remember that the analog to digital converter has this half moon shape in one side showing kind of this is usually the, the top where you look at it. It's just that the channels are here and when I did the tutorial on this it became a little bit uh, cumbersome to have the Raspberry Pi connect like over the sensor. So I'm actually going to turn this around, okay? Be really careful about this. So at the moment, I've got it the quote unquote wrong way around so that I can connect the sensors on this side. So I'll have the out sensor of the sound, uh, uh, the, the out pin of the sound sensor going to channel one, which usually would be on the other side at the top. And I'll have this sensor here 
Um, these all require or can do with 3.3 uh, volts, so we'll get that from here. Just It's just that this one needs um, 5 volt again. So we will supply that directly from the Raspberry Pi. Okay, all the other connections are onboard connections and I'll just um, connect all of them and see you in a bit. Okay, I hope I wired everything up correctly. Let's just take a look at the script. So basically, I have just merged all of the other scripts for, for each individual sensor. So in the beginning, we're doing all the inputs. Um, then, we're doing, then we've got a huge setup section where we're doing the setup for each sensor individually. Then a big loop section where we get the data from each sensor individually. And a couple of extra things. So first of all, you can see that some things are commented out. That's to do with um, Adafruit IO, which is an online IoT platform where you can upload your data uh, and view it uh, real time. And I'm going to be doing that in another video. But for now, this is just commented out because we first need to import the library and so on. Then you will see that there are a bunch of try and accept statements. I, I just do that in case one of the sensor fails. I don't want the entire uh, script to crash, um, and I just want to keep the other sensors going and at least get that, that data. So that's why in case something goes wrong here, we'll just note that something is wrong. Um, and the same in the, in the main loop. So then the last thing is that I want to um, save um, all the data um, to the internal um, SD card, as well as later on uploading it uh, to the web. And the way I'm going to do that is that every minute I'm going to take an average value for each sensor and save that. And that's what this is about, so the sums and the num. The num is going to count how often we go through the loop per minute. The sums is going to basically add each uh, sensor value to all the other uh, values that the sensor measured in that one minute. And then further down here, that's exactly where we do this. Um, still, every time we go through the loop, we're going to print all the data to the screen. So every one or two seconds, you'll see a, a line written to the terminal. But then um, every minute, we are going to write this to an internal CSV file, which is basically like an, an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and then while we do that, we're going to do the same thing um, online. So we're going to upload the data. So a couple of things we need to do here. First of all, we calibrated our RevC sensor. I showed that in one of the previous videos. And to do that, actually, up, it's up here. Um, like I noted here, we need to change this value. So mine was minus 0.27 or so. Yours will be different. So that's the first thing we need to change. The next thing we need to change is that we need this library, PYTZ, which is for time stamping. And uh, specifically, I, th I think I used it to specify time zone. So no matter where you are, it will export that correctly. And um, anything else? Yeah, lastly, of course, we need to um, download this, um, this file here from the internet. So let's just go through all of that. And I hope I don't forget anything. Um, okay, so first of all, let's create that um, data folder. There it is. Then we will get clone my folder here. And we will move the Python file to the forefront. No, that's not what I wanted to do.
There we go. Um, what next? Ah, okay, we are going to then sudo remove recursively the folder. Oh my god, what, what did I just do? Okay, sorry, I'll, I'll just do this again. So sudo git clone um, this. Okay, now we've got that back. Oh no, wait a minute, it did work, sorry. Scratch that. I don't know what I'm doing here. So now we want to sudo nano into this. Okay, and we'll scroll down to where the ref C is. Whoops. Uh, I will change that value. So minus 0.27 was mine. And save that. Okay, that looks about right. Now the last thing we need to think of is because we're writing to this other directory, we need to this time use sudo python iws and so on. And let's see where this takes us. Okay, so we've got a temperature reading here. Let's see if I hold my finger on there. That's going to change. Something's wrong with the rep C again. Okay, so the temperature is rising, the humidity, so that's fine. Next one is the light sensor. Let's see if it changes the, that value. Yeah, okay, so you see. It, it, there's always a little bit of a delay, but here the luminosity sensor uh, recognized that my finger was there. Now the noise. And that increased. And the CO2. Can you give it a minute? Yeah, so that's increasing. Then the volatile organic compounds also increased through my breath. That makes sense. And now the distance sensor, I will just okay. Something isn't right here. We'll just remove these wires. I think they're getting in the way. So let's see. 21 centimeters, yeah, I guess. Okay, now it's 21, 16. Yeah, okay, and as I go closer, the distance is increasing. So that is working. And it looks like the wind sensor is now also doing its 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 job. If, if this uh, happens more often, then I'll probably have to change that, that calibration. I might just increase that a little bit. Here for some reason, if I want to cl close, it always takes a while, but I will just change that one last thing. To some value that is a little bit less, so that should be fine now. This isn't 100% accurate, but um, basically I just want to know is there a lot of wind uh, um, or, or not? Is there a draft or not? Let's see. Okay, that seems to be fine then. Right, and you can see every minute, um, this means that it actually wrote this line uh, to the file. So we can actually check that out. Now we'll go into the data directory here. And we can see there is one CSV file with today's date. Um, okay, so you can see that um, it's starting to write the, write the lines there. So the first one is a proper timestamp and then temperature, humidity, and so on. Anyway, so um, I hope yours worked as well, and um, what are we doing in the next video? I guess in the next one, 
ah, there's going to be some, uh, um, there's going to be two more videos where I'll show some um, special things that we can do and then we'll get into s actually soldering all these connections onto a pull cord. So I look forward to that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.